Today's video or tutorial is going to be a continuation of our part 48 video. In the part 48, we talked about some indicators that are custom indicators, which are built in the MT4 or MT5, which can actually be used in trading the forest market. So you can actually use these indicators as strategies, okay, to trade the forest market. And I also said that once you find better ones than these customized ones, then you know you are already on your path to becoming a successful Forex trader. So in today's video, we will look at other tools or indicators that are also custom indicators, all right? So in the part 48 video, if you haven't watched, we talked about some indicators like the parabolic SAR, Haikinashi, and then Ichimoku. We talked about these three indicators and the way people use them to trade the forest market. So in today's video, we are going to talk about other indicators. So these indicators are actually tools that are used in trading the forest market. We'll be looking at the MACD today, and MACD comes with two different ways. There are people who trade using the MACD in different, different ways. So we'll be looking at the MACD today as a zero cross indicator and also um, a divergence indicator. All these are strategies, okay? So let's go straight to the MT4. Apart from the MACD, we also have um, some other indicators we'll be looking at. So straightforward. Let's go into the MT4 to see what we have today. But if this is your first time, I will advise that we have a playlist which is Forex Training for Beginners. It's a whole playlist starting from part one up to part 48. And this video is part 49. So I'll be glad if you are new to the forest market to start from the part one video and go to part two all the way and come up to part 49, which is this video, all right? We still have more videos that will be uploaded on this channel. So subscribe in order to be part of us. Whenever we share anything new, you can also have access to it. Is that okay? Good. Now let's go straight and then look at some indicators which are custom indicators. And when I say custom in indicators, what I mean is that they are built in the MT4 or MT5. So whenever you download the MT4 or MT5 platform, you will have this custom indicators, all right? So when you come to the navigator panel here, that is where you will find all these indicators. So today, I want us to talk about the MACD, first of all, then we look at the others. So this is the MACD. Some others call it MACD. So whether you say MACD or MACD, uh, it's still the same tool, all right? So let's bring it up. You double click and then you click OK. And here we have the MACD on the chart. So you will always find it below the chart here, okay? Now, we may not be able to talk about the parameters, but let's look at the strategy that is uh, involved using the MACD, all right? So first of all, let me mute my video. Good, so that you can actually see the screen well. Now, this is the MACD, and here we have it, all right? So the MACD has two main strategies that it is used for. There are others that are also developing their own strategies out of the same MACD as a tool, all right? There are others who also use the MACD as a volume indicator, all right? So let's talk about all this. First of all, let's look at the, the way people use it as volume indicator. Now, using MACD as volume indicator, what it means is that whenever this bars that you see here, this bars could either be going up or down. So whenever you see the bars here, I mean the ones here, or the ones at the top here, it's the same bars. So whenever the bars are down here, okay, because there is actually a 0, 0.00 something here. If you look at here, you see 0, 0.00 here. That is to tell you that that is the level. It's a zero 
thin line level, okay? So if I'll put it right, let me get a straight line. I want to get a straight line that will actually uh, be good. So this is a straight line like this. Okay, good. So whenever uh, the bus crosses, sorry, the, the, the bus here, okay, whenever they cross the zero line up, it means that it's an uptrend. And whenever they cross the zero line down, it means it is a downtrend. That is the zero cross strategy. We'll do that uh, in detail. But I want us to look at the volume kind of uh, indicator where we use the MACD as a volume indicator. The volume is the level of the bars. If the bars are very long, as we can see here, it means that there is high volume in the market, which may be going downwards. And whenever you see something small like here, let me clear, change the color. When you see something small like here, up, it means there's just a little volume. So the up move may not be high because the volume is just something very small. You understand? Or when you see something small like it is added down here, it means there is no volume to go down. And then when you see something here like this, it means there is no enough volume for the trade to go down. All right? Depending on the direction of the bars. So if the bars are pointing up, it means there's no enough volume for the trade to go up. It means the upward movement will not be anything high. And then when the bars are very short, like you are seeing them here, it means that there wouldn't be enough uh, volume in the market for the trade to come down. So if you look at it, this is where the bars came down. And if you look at it here, you see that it didn't really come down much. It went back up. Did you see that? And the same way here, when you look at the upward movement here, that was exactly here. You see that the trade didn't go up. So the downward movement, when it started, it didn't go that up, uh, down because the volume was very small here. So do you understand when it comes to volume with regards to the use of MACD? So whenever there are high bars here, like you are seeing here, it means there is enough volume for the trade to go down. And if you look at it, from where the bar started, you see that it's been down, 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 up to this level. It means there's enough volume for the down movement to happen. So this is how people use the MACD as volume indicator. Is that okay? Now, let's look at the other ways people use the MACD. There are those who use the MACD as a zero cross indicator. Now, when we say zero cross, it means the line, the 0, 0.00 that you see here, which is the middle line. Whenever the bus or whenever the bus crosses or the bus cross, okay, so the bus is in plural. Let me deal with my English well. So whenever the bus cross downwards, okay, these bars you see here, when they cross downwards, it means that it is a cell. So that is the second way people use it. Take note. So it was here the bars crossed and came down. So I'm putting the line on it so that you can actually see where the bars crossed and came down, which was on this. This is daily time frame, okay? This is on daily time frame. So the bars crossed here, and then it crossed over here. So this was the point at which the cross happened. Is that okay? On this pair here. Sorry, on this candle here. So this is where the bar crossed and came down. So look at it. From that point downwards, this trade remained downwards up to this point. And if you look at the number of pips, that is about 1,158 pips. If I will be right, let me go to the extreme. That is about 1,201 pips. 1,201 pips. That is the cell, because the bars cross down, cross here to meaning a cell. Are we good? Now, let's see where the bars crossed up. So the bars crossed up here. 
So look at where the bars crossed up. That was on this candle over here. That was where we had a cross over here too, on the indicator. So from here up, that is how many pips? That is 220 pips upwards, 220 pips. And how many pips down? It only went down 31 pips, but went up 220 pips. Did you see that? Good. Now let's look at the next one where it came down for a cell here on this bar for a cell. So this one would have been a loss because the cell never went down. So it never went down, but rather went up. So this would have been a loss because even there wasn't volume, there wasn't volume. So uh, this is it. This would have been a loss if you were to sell. Let's see again where it went by, up, that was somewhere here, okay? So from here upwards, how many pips up? That is, uh, even if to this point, that is 220 pips again. And then to the downside, that is uh, just 34 pips down, but 220 pips up. So this would have also been a win, Let's see this cell over here. So we had a cell here. This cell would have also been a loss because the trade never came sell. So this was where the cell started. It only came down a bit and then made all the way up. So this would have also been a loss. So this is a loss here. Let's look at this one also here. This is a buy. So this would have also been a loss because there wasn't even volume. So that would have been another loss here. All right, let's see this one here. This is what, sell, all right? This is a sell and that would have been another win. So from here down to this point, about 565 pips. That would have been 565 pips, which is a win. But apart from just, looking at where it goes up or comes down. Is there any other way you can trade it using this uh, uh, MACD or MACD as a zero cross indicator? I can say yes. There are people who before they also take the trade, that's the signal that the MACD gives. They look at the trend of the market. So in this case, before they take a buy or sell, they look at the trend of the markets and the trend is a sell. It's in a downtrend. So GBP card is a downtrend uh, pair right now. So if that is the case, then they will be looking at sell opportunities. So if they are going to look at sell opportunities, they are going to win here. This will be a win. Let's say the first trade is here. And then you target how many pips? I don't know, but you decide. Okay, so this would have been a win. So about 538 pips made from this one. And then the next trade that came sell was this one, which would have been a loss. Let's say if you set up your trade and decide to give it a stop loss of 100 pips. So this would have been a loss. You would have won 500 pips here. You lost 100 pips here, so you are left with about 400 pips as profit. Let's see the next cell. The next cell is also here. You lost it 100 pips. So in all, you lost 200 pips and you won 500 pips. So you still have about 300 pips to your credit. And then here too is a cell. You took this cell. You won about 1,180 something pips. So let's even say you won 1,000 pips. So 1,000 plus 500 pips would have been 1,500 pips. So you won two, lost two. Listen to the scenario. You won two and lost two, two, two. 
but the two that you won gave you about 1,500 pips. And the two that you lost gave you only 200 pips. So 200 minus 1,500, you still have about 1,300 pips to your credit. So you would have won two trades, lost two trades, but your account is seriously in good profit of about 1,330 pips. So this is how some people also trade. Let's see if I am to pick another pair. Let's see, let me look at the lowest uh, currency. Okay, AUDNZD is one of the lowest uh, currencies. It doesn't move fast. So let's see. The first thing the person will ask is the trend of the market. And this is an uptrend. Are we good? This is an uptrend. So the person will be looking for only buy opportunities. So let's look at the buy opportunities. So we had the first one. Let's even say we'll leave this one here because this is where the trend began. So we didn't take this one, but we took this one here. This is the first buy opportunity. Let's look at how many pips. You took your buy here, buy opportunity here. If you are to give it a stop loss of 100 pips, it only went down up to about 71 pips down. It didn't get to 100 pips, so you didn't lose this trade. But let's look at the upward movement. It went all the way up to this level here, which is about 370 pips almost 370 pips, so two, 370 pips. So let's even say 300 pips. You want 300 pips here. Yeah? There was a sell opportunity here, you didn't sell. Then a buy opportunity came over here again. So you took your buy here, upwards here. That's another 360 pips. So 370, 360. So let's even say, 300, 300 pips. So that would have been 600 pips to your credit without a single loss on AUD and ZD. You would have won this trade without a loss. So those who look at the trend before deciding will always make a good opportunity from this. So this is one of the ways people use the MACD also. So we've looked at people using the MACD as a volume indicator. And we've also looked at people using the MACD as a zero cross indicator. So whenever it crosses up, looking at the trend, it gives you the signal to go long or buy. If the trend is down or a sell trend, you'll be taking only uh, the MACD giving you a sell signal when the bars crosses down. Do you get it? Good. So this is another way people use the MACD. Now, Let's look at the last way that people use the MACD. Let me go back for the GBP card because I saw a lot of opportunities with it. Now, the third way people use the MACD indicator is what we call divergence. Divergence. I don't know if my spelling is correct, but I'm sure. So people also use the MACD as a divergence indicator or divergence strategy. There are those who do divergence strategy. So let's look at the divergence strategy. Is that okay? Now, looking at the divergence, what do we mean by divergence? Look at it carefully here. Now, look at the highest high this one came. That was here, right? I'm on the MACD now. Did you see the highest high it came? Sorry, the lowest low, because this is a down, downtrend. Lowest low was here, right? The lowest low was also here. This is exactly on the chart where this thing came down to this point. So that was here. Now, the trade tried to move up, didn't go, and then decided to come back down again. Now, it made another lowest low. It made another lowest low here. Are you getting it? But on the MACD, it couldn't make another lowest low. This should have come down below somewhere here. But on the MACD, let me clear this thing and then 
make you take a very critical look. Look at it here. This one, this was the lower low we got here, the second lower low. So this was the first lower low we got here. So the second lower low here should have come somewhere here, just like this one happened. So we would have gotten something like this. So we should have gotten the same something like this over here. But on the MACD, we didn't get that. On the MACD, we rather got something like this. So this one is down here. This one is up here. So while this one is giving you something like this as divergence, this one is also giving you the opposite. So we call this divergence. So whilst we were expecting a lower low, we saw a lower low on the chart. So we're expecting the same thing to happen here, but it didn't happen that way. We rather got a divergence. So once we get a divergence here, it means that it is time to go by. So if you bought here on the divergence over here, how many pips down? It came down just 100 pips. Or let's even say before this one, you took a buy here. It went all the way up 352 pips. 352 pips before it made its way back down to that same level again. Now look at it, another divergence. Look at another divergence. So you would have won this one about 300 and something pips because there was a divergence here. Now, the next down movement that came to give us another lower low here is here. Look at it, another divergence. So while this one is going up, this one is coming down. Do you see the divergence? So this would have been another divergent opportunity here to also go buy again. So at this level, you would have seen another divergence, lower, low, lower, low, another lower, low to go buy. And if you went by on this divergence here, you would have never lost. You would have made how many pips? About five or 600 pips. So the first divergence, 300 pips. The second divergence, 600 pips. Do you get it? So this is another strategy that people use in trading the forest markets. So they use the MACD with a chart for divergence. I'm sure you should be able to understand this. So if you don't understand this, maybe you may have to chat me one-on-one -on -one, and I'll take my time to explain that again for you. But this is it. This is a lower low here, which is a lower low here. The next lower low here, but we didn't get a lower low here, but we rather got a lower high. We got a lower high here. We didn't get a lower low. Lower low, another lower low. But we didn't get a lower low here. We rather got a lower high. So this is a divergence. So whoever is seeing this would take a buy here on the divergence. So this is a simple strategy. This on daily time frame. So you would have taken the divergence buy here. And that is it, about 300 and 60 pips, 70 pips. First win. The trade never came down to even less than 100 pips. If your stop loss was 100 pips, you would have never lost this trade. It would have been a great win. Now, the next trade came back down to give us another lower low. But we didn't see a lower low here. We rather saw a lower high. Came low, but still on the high. Because this one is going this way on the up move, while this one is going on the down move. So a lower low here, but a lower high here. So this would have been another divergence to go buy again. So if you are taking a buy here, straight to 600 pips. Never came 100 pips against you. If you set your stop loss as 100 pips, you would have never lost this trade again. It would have been another win because you are only trading divergence. Now, let's look at another one. So over here, hmm, 
this would have been another divergence here because there was a pullback to this level here. But will this be a divergence? No, this will not be a divergence anymore because this one from here to this one is on the up. And then from here to this one too, still on the up. So this would have been just a pullback. So this wouldn't be a divergence. Is that okay? Now let's see whether we can see another divergence from the top side downwards. This is just from the down upwards. Look at, look, let's look at this. This is a higher high, HH, higher high, which is a higher high here on the MACD. And then this trade made another higher high over here. So something like this, but it didn't happen that way. It didn't make another higher high here. It made a lower high <laughs> this way. It made a lower high here. Higher high from this side, lower high from this side. So that is another divergence. So that would have been an opportunity to sell. So if you sold from here, 100 pips stop loss would have never been hit. And then it came all the way down to about 1,500 pips. Divergence. Divergence. Came down 1,500 pips. So this is divergence in terms of using the MACD. So I have given you three strategies with only MACD, whether you want to use it as a volume indicator or you want to use it as a zero cross indicator where you will use the bars here to take the trade. When there's a cross down on the zero downwards, that would be a sell. When there's a cross up, that would be a buy. So either you are using it as a volume indicator or you are using it as a divergence indicator or you are using this as a zero cross. So we have volume. Let me write them down so that you can easily see the three strategies. So whether you are using it as a volume indicator or a zero cross, a zero cross or divergence. So the question is up to you to decide. Which of these would you want to use the MACD for? Is it as a volume indicator or a zero cross indicator or divergence? It will be up to you to decide. Is that okay? Now, let me see if I can get another, let me just pick the AUD NZD again and let's see if we can get something good with it. AUD NZD, divergence, right? Can we do this? <laughs> Look at something here. Look at something here. This is not a divergence. This is a, a higher high, like this over here, higher high. The next one came, there was a pullback down. The next one went higher high again. So you see that it happened on another higher high. So this is not a divergence. Do, do you get it? But let's see the divergence somewhere here. Look at it here. This is a higher high, which is somewhere here. Okay. And then we had another higher high here, which is somewhere here. So this is a divergence. So this is coming down. This is going up. Do you see the divergence there? So it would have been enough time to sell over here. So if you sold over here, sell. It only went up against you about 34 pips. It didn't go against you 100 pips. And then came in your profit or in your way about 153 pips. So 153 pips. Okay, 153. So even if we say 150 pips, that would have been enough pips now. 150 pips is enough. Okay, let's say your stop loss is 100 pips. And, yet, and then your minimum target is 100 pips because if your stop loss is 100 and your TP is even above 100, that is okay. Your first TP should be above 100. So that would have been a, a win. About 150 pips should be a win. So the divergence would have, been play, uh, would have played out here perfectly. 
Are we good? Let's see. Uh, if you want to use this as a zero cross, you would ask yourself, okay, we have done a zero cross with this already. So I think that is that. Okay. But let's see if we can get another divergence. Um, should we say this is divergence? My people, look at this. This is the lower low on the MACD here. And then another, is this a lower low or a lower high? This should be lower high, isn't it? But look at it, lower low here, and then lower high here. So this will be divergence, right? Yes, this will be a divergence. So that would be a time for you to buy. So if you bought, hmm? if you bought here, a buy here, okay, a buy here. Would you have lost 100 pips? I'm never sure you would have gotten a stop loss, but a TP, <laughs> that's 310 pips. Upwards, 310 pips, 310 pips, 310. All right, so that would have been another win, another divergence. That would have been another win. So I'm sure it looks like the divergence strategy is working better uh, than the zero cross, but I don't know which one would be good for you to use. So you may have to go through this whole thing yourself and see which one would be better for you. Is that okay? So um, I think this video is already long. Uh, should I add one more? Uh, one more trading tool, or I should just leave the MACD alone. Um, let me see if I can add one more tool. Let's do the RSI, okay? Let's do the RSI for the sake of time. Let's just do the RSI. Okay, so this is the RSI indicator. I've just placed it on the chart, and this is how it is. It's still on daily time frame, okay? I haven't changed the time frame. Now, the RSI has two parameters, which is 70 and 30. 70 and 30. The 70 is the up dotted line. The 30 is the down the dotted line, I beg your pardon. So what this means is that whenever the trade or this line, which is the blue line you see in the middle is actually uh, replicating the, the candles. So whenever the blue line crosses above the 70, it means it is overbought. And then when it crosses below the 30, it means it is oversold. That is what the RSI indicator is used for. Okay. So at this point, uh, we had a cross above the 70 here. That will be time for you to sell. So if you are to sell, sell here, somewhere here, when the cross happened was somewhere here. It went up against you about 82 pips and then came in your favor about uh, 211 pips. That would have been a win, isn't it? But let's look at this scenario here. I'm sure we may never be happy with what the RSI made us do here. The RSI came here and told us that it is overbought, sorry, uh, oversold oversold somewhere here. So the RSI said we should start buying. What happened? <laughs> you see the disaster. So if you bought here, it only went up 58 pips and it came against you 260 pips, 260 pips. So this would have been a loss, not just a loss, a great one, because RSI said is over what? sold so you should buy and it kept on being oversold oversold all the way down here so this is the annoying part of rsi sometimes it can give you wrong signals okay it can give you wrong signals but there are people who also want to consider the trend before joining so in this case if you are looking at aud and ZD, the trend is an uptrend so there's no way to call to take sell. They won't take the sells. They would rather prefer to be taking the buys. But in this case, you would have waited 
more than necessary without taking a, a single signal. Because if you wanted a cell, it never came to touch here, never came to touch here. So you wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to buy. Do you get a scenario? Because the uptrend is there. So you are waiting for it to come and touch the down before you take a buy. And it never did. At all these two occasions, it's never, it never did. So you wouldn't have gotten a trade out of this, right? Let's see GBP card, whether we would have gotten a trade. This is a downward movement. And if you wanted to sell, you wouldn't have gotten opportunity because it never came overbought before you can think of a sell. You see how bad the RSI can be. So a lot of people do not like to use the RSI because of some of these things. And then when it asked you to sell, look at a buy here, it said buy here. Now, if you bought, look at what happened. It said buy here. This is it, buy. It only went up 65 pips, came all the way against you, about 379 pips. So this wouldn't have been a good one. Again, look at it here. It asked you to, to buy over here and look at the hell. If you bought somewhere here, RSI, it only went up 100 pips, came against you about 1,000 plus. Oh my God. So RSI, this is the future it presents. Whether it's a good future or a bad one, you may have to test and see. Maybe you can find other strategies out there. People are also using the RSI in different ways. So maybe you can search and see if there is any other better way people are using the RSI. Then you can actually look at it from that perspective. Now, if you like what we are doing, I think we only did two of the tools today, the MACD and then the RSI. So there are still some more tools for us to do. So we are talking about strategies here. So if you do not have a strategy, I'm sure these strategies that we are giving you will begin to be your guide to help you to understand how to buy or sell in the forest market. My name is Kofi, your admin for this channel. If you like what we are doing, please, I beg you subscribe. I beg you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that anytime we post a new video, you'll be the first to get it. If you love what I'm doing for free, please show me some love by subscribing to this channel. Also like the video so that uh, YouTube algorithm will actually recommend this video to more people. That is when you like the video. Thank you and God bless you. I'll see you in another video. So please expect a new video on this channel. Until then, take very good care of yourself.